Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Lamplight Project Study Guide Fellowship. Um, before we start, I'll just open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord. Father, we thank you for bringing us all safely here. And Lord, we ask that as we work through, as we work through the Lamplight Project and the study guide and look at your word, Lord, Father, that you would, you would reveal to us things that we haven't seen before. Father, you would be with us and guide us in our questions and our answers. And Lord, you would guide us to the scripture that's relevant to us today. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're on section five, we're on worksheet number five, which is on page 29, and we talked on question four um, on the last program. I think we'll just summarise that. Question four is, think about, discuss, give examples of prophecies pointing to the Messiah. Now we talked about that if in the next section, um, I lost the page now, on page... 34, it, it lists a whole list there. So rather than go over that and then go over it again when we come to it, if you want to read through them, that's great. I think what we'll do, because there's so many prophecies relating to that, that I think one of the main ones is Isaiah 53. Now, if we just between us read Isaiah 53, and that will give quite a good overview mm -hmm. Um if you would like to start, yeah. Alistair, and then we'll yeah. work, work our way around. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer, and through the Lord makes his life a guilt offering. He will see his offspring and prolong, prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous service will just, servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many, and made intercession with the transgressors. Now that was obviously the prophet Isaiah talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that was written roughly 740 years BC. So 700 years before it happened. Yep. It's all prophesied there. Now, as I say, there's so many prophecies for the Lord. To go through them all, we'd be here all day. So, yep. it gives us an overview. And as I say, we're going on to talk about that um, in a later chapter anyway. So, 
I think we'll move on to our next question, question five, which again is on page 29, and it's think about and discuss. Can you see differences in personality? And that's between Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Any thoughts? Obviously, Alistair, you, you won't have read through no. too much of those. Um, any Can't thoughts? Can't help me there, Tom. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Well, Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, which tells you something of him. Um, and we can find that in Jeremiah 4 and 19 and 9, 1 and 10, 19, 20. There's all these verses about him weeping over his people uh, or over the fate of his people. So he was given this title in later times as the weeping prophet. Um, he was a young man from a priestly family, from that background, but he was more timid and kind of shrinking away, you know, and um, he was young and inexperienced and he felt inadequate. And we, we can read that in Jeremiah 1, verses 6 to 8, that he was full of these kind of excuses that he wasn't the one. But of course, as we see, God calls and they obey. But he was charged with a message of judgment, you know, so that was hard to tell his people all the time. Mm and what that judgment would mean, not just that they were going to be judged, but what it would mean for them. And he was, in the early chapters of Jeremiah, um, you can see this kind of almost like a tenderness towards his people. He really was kind of sore hearted for them and yet they treated him abominably, ultimately, you know. Um, so I would say he was a, a, yeah, faithful and fearless to God, but, but naturally, Timid and, and shrinking. And he didn't marry, did he? He wasn't allowed. He wasn't allowed, allowed to, to marry, marry no. no. So, so there was a loneliness there yeah. as well, you know. Um, and the only people that ever showed him any respect were the Babylonians. Mm. <laughs> and you can read that in Jeremiah chapter thirty-nine. His own people didn't, you know. Mm. Um, and Baruch, who was his secretary, was like his mm. closest friend and companion. But otherwise, he was often quite solitary, you know. I think it'd be fair to say that uh, you could you could sum it up that he wasn't well liked. Um, Very much so. You know, to even to the people he was prophesying to, the things he had to say to them, they didn't want to hear it really. No. They really didn't want to right. hear what he had to say. Um, we'll, we'll look at it in other examples as the questions go on, but there's kings he was prophesying to that again had their own prophets that were telling all of them. It's going to be wonderful, and Jeremiah would come along and say, "That's not how it's, it's not. going to be." So, if if you're in that situation that you're a king and you've got all these guys telling you how wonderful you are and how victorious you're going to be in battle, and then this guy comes along and says, "Oh, that's not going to happen," and this is going to happen, and you're going to fail, and you're not going to like the guy. No, are you? Like so it, it wasn't a well liked prophet by the people mm. that he was prophesying to. Yeah. I know, and in Jeremiah um, 15, verse 20, God is speaking to Jeremiah and he says, I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the cruel. So, so God gave him that fearlessness, that kind of almost a toughness yeah. that he needed. But inside of himself he was yeah. he was much more kind and tender you know than the people probably ever realized um and as you was... said the weeping prophet mm -hmm. yeah. Did, yeah did they try to attack him or uh often verbally attack <laughs> him yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah all sorts of things yeah yeah, yeah. but god protected him god protected mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. but he suffered a lot alistair right. he suffered a lot yeah you, you wouldn't choose to be Jeremiah. No, you wouldn't want to be. You definitely wouldn't no. choose and to be. And as we spoke about in another programme, you were appointed a prophet. Yeah. It wasn't something you chose to do, so quite a heavy burden. Quite a heavy burden. Quite a heavy burden to come under. Um, slightly going off, slightly going off, but that's yeah. what we do. We were talking when we were doing this. Um, it's in Jeremiah 16, and we talked about in verse 10, 
And it says, and it shall be when you show these people all these words and they say to you, mm -hmm. why has the Lord pronounced all this great disaster against us? Or what is our iniquity or what is our sin we have committed against the Lord? Then you shall say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they have walked after other gods and have served them and worshipped mm -hmm. them and have forsaken me and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart so that no one listens to me. So I was just bringing that up about the sins of the fathers, really because when you read on the next verse, you have done worse than your fathers. And it just, it just breaks your heart when you hear how, how the Lord must be heartbroken when, you know, he's saying, it's, you've done worse than your fathers. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people say to me, oh, we're, you know, we're, su we're, we're suffering now because of the sins of our fathers. Actually, no, we're, we're as much to blame and at fault. Um, and then further on, I think you were saying, Marilyn, in verse 16, uh -huh. uh, it says, I behold, I will send for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they will, they shall fish them, and afterward I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt for them for every mountain and every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, nor is their iniquity hidden from my eyes. Um, and I've written, is this still going on today? <laughs> and absolutely yeah, it is and so. imagine how Jeremiah felt oh, having to tell his people mm -hmm. this yeah. but he had no choice yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. no that was a wee aside but mm -hmm. I was just struck by by that when I was reading it so for all maybe the shortcomings that he felt in his own yeah. character yet he was faithful and mm -hmm. told the people mm -hmm. and was fearless in doing it you know um, whatever he felt within himself yeah. Yeah. so yeah. So I think we've summarised Jeremiah there, mm -hmm. um, Ezekiel, any thoughts? Well, um, I don't know if you said that the Jeremiah was roughly between 627 to 580 BC and then mm -hmm. Ezekiel was just slightly later from mm -hmm. the yep. 590, so he was slightly after um, and it was Ezekiel that was at the same time as Habakkuk. Yes, yeah. Um, there was they were priests, several of them were contemporaries. Yeah, um, yeah. Prophets together. So he was an exiled Jew in in Babylon, um, and I think you said earlier he was known as a visionary. Mm -hmm. He had lots of these strange, um, like the dry bones, what, what we read in another um, session. Um, yeah, he was gonna in in chapter thirty six. He gathered Israel back from the nations and back to their own land and be given a new heart um, and that was described in the Valley of the Bones. So um, yeah he was a he was God's spokesman to the, the fellow exiles at that time um, and unlike Jeremiah he did marry and he, he did have a family didn't he? I don't know if he had family but he had a wife, wife. but she died because God right. used her death as a picture for the people. Right of oh, what yes. would happen to Jerusalem and how they would mourn over the destruction of Jerusalem. Right. And Ezekiel was told, do not mourn no, for your wife. That's Don't. Right. Just, you know, she died in the evening and the next morning he was out there and had to tell them these yes. prophecies. And mm -hmm. Ezekiel 3, um, verses 7, basically on, the house of Israel is not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is hardened and obstinate. And this is God saying to Ezekiel, But I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. And it, it seems as you read through and learn more about Ezekiel's character that he was kind of tougher. Mm. He was hard's the wrong word but he had a steel about him that Jeremiah yeah. didn't have mm -hmm. and um, it points in the scripture and I've lost the verse sorry oh verses 14 and 15 of that same chapter 3 he was bitter and angry at his people whereas Jeremiah wept for them yeah, you he know a He's, yeah and of course Ezekiel's name means God is strong yeah, or God yeah, strengthens yeah. so that kind of sums up his character and he saw the people's sin in all its blackness. I think Jeremiah didn't want to, is mm -hmm. what I'm perceiving. Yeah. But Ezekiel saw it all and again was open and obedient to God. 
and was a faithful watchman, and that's what Ezekiel yeah, becomes watchman. known as, the watchman. watchman. Um, <clears throat> and we read that in Ezekiel 3 as well. And so, he said, just in that verse 15 mm-hmm. that you mentioned there, uh-huh. um, Then I came to the captives at Tel Aviv, who dwelt by the river Sheba, and I sat where they sat, and remained there, astonished among them seven days. Um, I've got a wee comment there, example of the pastoral aspect, uh-huh. because he actually was amongst them, yeah. and he dwelt with them and um, mm. remained there with them. So he wasn't um, far away at times. No, I he suppose. was there with them. He was them. there with yeah. them. Yeah. And, my, and my translation says he was overwhelmed, yeah. you know, and there's a wee comment that says, because of his horror over Judah's impending doom, he was absolutely overwhelmed, you know. Mm. So although he was angry and bitter at his yeah. people, he still was overwhelmed with the enormity of mm-hmm. what was going to happen to them. Um, and of course, he was a priest as well yeah. in training when he was taken captive to Babylon and then God called him to be a prophet. But because of that training, he would understand symbols and rituals yeah. and that comes through yeah. in the visions, I think, doesn't it, more yeah. Duke? Very we see so. that because the, the visions are quite incredible. Mm. Um, and I think that's where that comes from. But it's, I read as well that he's a man of broad knowledge, that he understood all the national traditions of Israel, but he also understood international affairs and um, and history, and he was God had gifted him with a powerful yeah. intellect. Okay. So quite a different character mm-hmm. from Jeremiah, yeah. but yet sent with the same message mm-hmm. of judgment. You know? And I think it's fair to say, you know, Ezekiel showed a lot of things through things that he actually did. You know, uh-huh. he sort of played out things. Ah, uh-huh. it was like... It as was well a, as, yeah. as, as speaking things. Uh-huh. I mean, lying on his side for however oh, many yeah. days. Yeah, 90 days, he had to lie on his side. various sight. other cooking things. And and the cooking pot and... and yeah, 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 all sorts of things. He, uh-huh. There was a lot of things that were played out, if you like. <laughs> Yeah. Like he was, I don't know how you would describe it really, not like a show, but the way... He but it was can, like a visual aid, yeah, wasn't I, I, it? I, I, I like you would use with the children, well not just with the children, with us as well. Yeah. It was like a visual aid to help them understand. He would actually do things mm-hmm. um, as well as say things. And I think that was quite specific to Ezekiel, wasn't it? Oh yes. I don't yes. think any of the other prophets to the same extent yeah. did that. So you can see differences there. Was he giving them better news than what... Um, no, no, no. Oh, oh, no. Just the no. same news. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Prophets bring. Uh-huh. But, and, and I mean, Jeremiah had to do things. I mean, in chapter 13 of Jeremiah, there's a story about a linen belt, but you need to read all that. Mm, but sense. Ezekiel had to do things in a different way, and yeah. I think that's it, visual and what have you. And, and I mean, how he... how he coped when his wife died, and that's in Ezekiel 24... And and God says to him, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, with one blow, I'm about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet do not lament or weep or shed any tears. Groan quietly, do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover the lower part of your face or eat the customary food of mourners. I got it the wrong way round. It's, I spoke to the people in the morning and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. It's a it's for you. Oh, I know, taking away the delight of your eyes mm. and you continue to... That reminds you that God gives you. And the Lord... The give, he gives yeah. you your partner, he gives you your yeah. children, yeah. he gives you your, your life, your your way of earning a living, your home, none of it is yours. And that's a good reminder, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, that hymn that is well with my soul. Yeah. That mm-hmm. just when you're when yeah. you're saying that, that that was what that was written about, yeah. because his whole he, family uh, yeah. but if, when you're in the Lord, you just you mm-hmm. know that at any given mm-hmm. That's right. You know, yeah. yeah. He lost his children in the the, the, ship that sunk. the ship that sunk, um, yeah, and that was when he still the, said, yeah, it's, it's okay, well Lord, if it's your will, because his he accepts it. That strong, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's quite a difficult one, in. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Quite a difficult one. So any other thoughts on the two prophets? I mean, it's saying, can you see the differences 
in personality. When I first yeah. read that, it's like that's a really difficult. I was question. the same. Yeah. Really Absolutely difficult the question. Same. Yeah. Um, because when you're reading through the two books, personally, you're more focused on what's going on, the events, the uh -huh. events rather, rather than the personality the of, uh -huh. of, of who's telling you about it. Yeah. And I kind of struggled with that question a wee bit. Glad um, to hear it. Yes, so did I. Because I wasn't quite sure what I should yeah. put on that. Um, there's summaries, you know, this is a, a, a life application Bible, and there's quite a lot of good stuff in it, and they give a summary who Ezekiel was and the main points mm -hmm. of him. Yeah. And you look through that and you've done the same for Jeremiah. It was helpful, but it still didn't mm -hmm. give... Clarity. Clarity mm -hmm. as to the what is the difference in personality. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you've summed it up pretty well, well Marlon. Part of the thing about Jeremiah, about him being timid and so on, I got that from a book by F.B. Meyer, who right. writes wonderful commentaries, and it's ancient, it's fallen to bits, I was given it by someone, because I was really stuck, mm. I thought, what? and I thought, oh, I've got this commentary, and he kind of gave you one or two bits mm -hmm. early on, I mean, it's, it's a full book, but that started me off then, and I kind yeah. of knew what I was looking for, but that was only way I got mm. started to, because I could but you not did bring it out, out from the scriptures about the bitterness uh -huh. and, yeah, and once, the different Yeah, once I character. knew where I was to you go. You said that, Heather, as yeah. well, the different characters yeah. of yeah. the two as well. But I think we have to be careful with that as well, you know, I'm saying I was looking in yeah. the summary there, and, you know, we've been looking in other books. If you spend a lot of time going through the book of Ezekiel. Jeremiah and the book of Ezekiel and really spend a lot of time maybe one, read one then read the other and yeah. then go back and mm -hmm. you wouldn't see the difference in character mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so I think yeah. it's good to use those as jumping off points yeah. but it takes, that's the good thing if you've got mm -hmm. a good bible or a good commentator mm -hmm. they'll take you into scripture yeah. Yeah. so that you go in then and dig yeah. for yourself yeah. so you're absolutely uh -huh. right because it, no disrespect to anybody, but I've been in other Bible studies and, and, and home groups a long, long time ago, and they were more interested in what the commentary yes. said than what the actual scripture said. You know, say, you'd, I don't know, you'd be reading a passage, you were given a passage to read weekly kind of thing, and the discussion that week was all about the commentary. Mm, that's where the a study Bible can be a danger because mm -hmm. you end up reading the notes and you haven't actually taken in for yourself uh -huh. what the well, words what say. But it's good to have a balance, but again, bear in mind that it's really the scripture you should be yeah. looking at. And I mean, as I say, this is a study Bible. I very rarely read the study notes that are with it because I'd rather read through the scripture, mm -hmm. try and figure it out. And as I've said before, if I still can't get a grip on it, I'll go back to maybe like a good news, something like that. That's a, a, another translation. Another that's translation. Helpful. That, yeah. Good news was, as far as I'm aware, written for children. The guy rewrote it for his kids. So that suits me fine because I can make sense of it. And then I can go back into another version, translation, if you like, and you'll get more out of it that um, way. Um, yeah. I've even found study notes to sway you away in the wrong direction. Uh -huh. Just thought I'd mention that, you know, when we're talking about that, um, because we were looking in various yes. other areas to answer this question. You have to be very careful about the commentators mm. that you're using. And how do you and know which commentator's from, right and yeah. which is wrong? And so you is. must get into scripture and, as you say, use even other translations yeah. to help. Yeah. 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 So any other thoughts on... Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Shona, I've seen you thumbing no, through your notes there. No, no. I think I read out most of what I had down. Okay. Um, I said that Ezekiel had brought a, some hope and salvation, but I don't know. He does further on in the book. Further in the he book, does, yeah. yeah. Um, uh -huh. After 586, he yeah. kind of brought this hope in God. The message the changes that yeah. God gives him and talks about the restoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was Heather, anything to ask Ad? Happy enough for that? No, no. Okay. You, you get um, familiar with the characters as you read the books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you see how they're all very unique. But the messages with, with the prophets is about repent and turn back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. hopefully that's made a wee bit of sense to Alice. Obviously, you've, you've no read through them. Um, big books, massive subjects, yeah. a lot to try to keep your head around, if oh, you yes. like. Yeah. Yeah. You could study the Book of Ezekiel for a year, you know, easily, very easily. Right. It's, there's so much in there. Mm-hmm. But again, as we've said with everyone, it's a kind of rough overview on that. So well happy with that yes, yeah. so far anyway um question six we're still on page 29 we're still on worksheet five question six think about and discuss how do you recognize prophecy fulfilled and still to come there's a question and a half yeah. whether it ha- whether it's happened yeah is that kind of going back to what we discussed about true prophecy and well, it could be, yeah. How do you recognise prophecy fulfilled? Obviously, if it if it points back to the Bible. I mean, my example is um, Israel was formed in nineteen forty eight, mm-hmm. and that the was nation the nation, the nation yeah. of Israel, uh, that was um, the nation was born, and that's something that the, way back in in historical times of the Bible, they wouldn't have believed that could possibly happen because the temple had been destroyed. I don't know how many times the temple was destroyed. Twice. Twice. So for them to know that the nation would be made... Um, well, as it's quoted, and I'm sure it's in the Daniel Project, you know, they're talking about, as we've spoken about the Holocaust, what they were saying was that if you told any of the Jews that were in the concentration camps that within yeah. a few years yeah. they were going to have their own nation, yeah, they would have died laughing. Yeah. Yeah. That it was so mm-hmm. far removed from anybody's mm-hmm. thought that they were actually going to have their own nation again back in what was mm-hmm. the promised land. Um, it was just so far away from reality, nobody would have believed it. And yet, 1948, it happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was prophesied. That was that prophesied. Was that was prophe- yeah. The date wasn't prophesied, but it was yeah. prophesied that it was going to happen. Yeah. And um, it's, that's one from Ezekiel thirty-seven about the yeah. dry bones. That's oh. yeah. part yeah. of what that's pointing forward oh. to, Alistair. Yeah. Yeah. And also about it will gather all the nations. nations. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes right through Jeremiah yeah. and so on about God gathering them, calling them from the north and the south and the east mm-hmm. and the west, and other people will bring them home, carrying them on their shoulders and. There's so many mm-hmm. things, and we've seen yeah. them come home from various countries, Ethiopia for one, yeah. you know, yeah. and boats, okay. yeah, boats amazing, and planes. and yeah. So even within our own, I wouldn't say lifetime, because I wasn't alive then, but you know, I mean, even within in our own period, yeah. we can see fulfilled prophecy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, that's, that's from it's, the Bible. From the yeah. Bible. And that's that it, it, just, sorry. Do, no, no, you got, I was just going to say it was prophesied hundreds said, of years. Whatever is happening, even about Israel, it's all in Scripture, Alistair. Yeah. It's not in Scripture, it's not a prophecy being fulfilled yeah. by the Lord. So it must all be validated from yeah. Scripture, mustn't it? Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's false, it's not right, you know. The Daniel Project. Is excellent. Yeah, yes. it, it really highlights uh-huh. prophecy. Yeah. And we've brought this out that for, for scriptural prophecies from God, it must all be specific to the time and the place and even often the people, yeah. you know, and a lot of them, well, we just need to think back to Genesis when we looked at the Exodus. That's That was prophesied before it happened and it was fulfilled within the lifetime of the people of Israel and not just them, the people of Egypt and the other surrounding nations, you know. And again, it can be validated from sources outside of scripture. Yeah. It's just in the library of Alexandria yeah. and so many places in these civilizations that recorded all these things. So when it's fulfilled, it tallies with scripture and can be verified historically, you know. So what can we recognise with prophecy still to come then? So who's not who's not come back mm-hmm. <laughs> that died on a crucif- mm-hmm. was crucified was Jesus. And they were told in numerous well we read Isaiah fifty three that was a, well. That was about no. That was an earlier prophecy. Mm-hmm. But we read about that he he will return. Um, so we have to believe the Bible. Yeah. If we believe in everything else that we're reading, then we have to believe that 
that that is a prophecy that's still to happen. Um, and nobody knows the hour of the day. Not even the Lord, Not, only God himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how you recognise a false prophet as well, because mm -hmm. there's many came and said that they can work the day out. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and that's you know, just not true. It's all happened in the past day. You've, yeah. you've seen all the reports yeah. of it in the papers that. And it's mocking. People, it's mocking. And it's God. making a, a yeah. joke And it's of making it. Christians yeah. look ridiculous, and you yeah. know because yeah. everybody laughs mm -hmm. when uh, it says even the sun doesn't mm -hmm. know the day and hour. So that tells you. Mm -hmm. I've read things about knows. people who yeah. said they are Jesus and then right. come back. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few yeah. of them on the go at the moment. Yeah. There's yeah. a guy in South America, uh -huh. I can't remember his yeah. name, and he's got this massive following. And he, yeah, he's right. saying that he's the returned mm -hmm. Christ. I did, yeah. I've seen it, I think mm -hmm. I read that. And it's yet, scripture tells us that when the Lord does come, oh, every knee will bow, yes. every eye will yeah. see him, every t there'll be yeah. no exceptions, every tongue will know, will confess who he is, and every yeah. eye will see yeah. and every knee will bow. So they may have a following, but that's not everyone, yeah. is it? So that tells well, through you. Through the internet, people can see anything they want now, can't they? Mm. But, I mean, this is in a later topic, and I know I keep yeah. saying that, but we'll talk about Come this in, in the end times. Yeah. But there's certain things have to be in place For it to happen. before the Lord yeah. comes back. And there's certain of these things aren't in place at the moment. Uh -huh. So, therefore, he can't come back until these things are in place. Now, you could say, oh, well, that could be wrong. But you look at all the prophecies we've looked at, and we've only skimmed the surface. Yeah. And even the ones in Daniel, they are so specific. Mm -hmm. And they were talked about hundreds yeah. of years before they happened, and it all happened. And there's nowhere in Scripture that there is biblical prophecy from the Lord that was either wrong or didn't happen. Because as we've said, that the test for a prophet is that what is prophesying must lead you to the Lord, it mustn't take you away from yes. the Lord, and it must happen if it's time specific. Mm -hmm. So all these things that have been prophesied, the majority of them have happened. It's not like they've been wrong or they've been nearly right or, well, that kind of means that they've been on the button, mm -hmm. absolutely on the button. Mm -hmm. So the prophecies that are talked about in Scripture that still haven't happened, they're the ones that are still to come. Uh -huh. um, it's not like they're not going to happen because they haven't happened. They are going to happen. It's just... But they're time specific, they're time specific. and they will yeah. happen in God's timing. God's timing. And back to the Lord coming back again. I know we're jumping ahead of you, but, but it's just while we're talking about it. As I've said, there are certain things have to be in place before yeah. the Lord comes back. So when you hear people, you know, talking about, that, oh, Jesus has returned this guy in South America or whatever. Well, can it possibly be him? Because that, that, and that, and that hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. So therefore... It isn't him. Exactly. He's a false prophet, maybe. Um, right? Jesus even yeah. specifies things himself yeah. in Matthew 24. Um, yeah. Yes. Things that have to happen yeah. before he will return. Uh -huh. But the, again, and, that's and, another and, subject, yes. so we'll, we'll leave that for another yeah. day. And, mm -hmm. I mean, for biblical prophecy <coughs> and, and so on, it can be understood before the event. You know, it makes sense, and yeah. it and it can and you know what you're looking for. Time Whereas with time. people like Nostradamus, it can only be interpreted mm -hmm. after an event. Mm -hmm. So people can read into that yeah. whatever they want. But as you say, Duke, the scriptural prophecy, biblical prophecy, is so specific. Mm -hmm. You can't read into mm -hmm. it. It's either that or it's not that. Yeah. You know, and, and every time it's been. Bang yeah. on. I mean, hundreds yeah. have already been fulfilled and yeah. not one of them has been wrong in any detail. So that makes you, well, that makes me believe that the ones that aren't fulfilled will yet be it's fulfilled. Bang on the button, yeah. as they said. Yeah. Now, as we've said before, the Bible is the only sacred book, if you like, out of all the religions that has got prophecy in it fulfilled. Other ones have got certain prophecies in them, but they've not came through. They've, mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've not helped. So mm -hmm. make your own mind up on that one. To me, if you're reading through a book and it's saying, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, that's going to happen, that's going to happen, and it's all happened, there's a bit of validity about that, uh, isn't there? Well, there is. Um, whereas the rest of them, oh, this, they're all a bit vague anyway, um, the, the, the other ones. Yes. And the, there's none of them have happened. No. 
so they've got no track record. As we spoke about in the very first programs, how do you believe something? Well, you've got to trust it. And how do you get the trust? You've got to build up a trust. You know, we spoke about if you're talking to somebody and they're giving you advice, how do you know their advice is good? Well, you know by you've built up a relationship with them and you trust them. It's the same with the Bible. You can go through the prophecies and that, and because you see things are prophesied and they've came true, you can trust it. Because it says that, that happened. It says that, that happened. It says that's going to happen, so, well... Based on what we know. You you have have to you're pretty much sure it's going to happen mm -hmm. the way it says. So... And it's not just a handful. I mean, no, there's, there's as we've seen, there's hundreds of prophecies that have come true, Alistair, in every detail. So that gives you a trust yep. in the Lord. And when you see how he's been with Israel, all his promises so far to, to them yep. have happened. I mean, who could have predicted that this country would have come about in three years after the end of the war? Yep. People who were just, be gassed by their millions, Yeah, I mean, basically. they were decimated and they were they were walking skeletons and who ever could have predicted mm -hmm. that they would be a nation within three years? And yet they were yeah. and they are. And mm -hmm. whoever has come against them, God has dealt yeah, with them and God will deal with yeah. them. It's the whole country. Yeah, they'll go yeah. through a lot, but God is... Tiny. Their protector, he's their God, and he will deal with those that come against them. So. And again, there's a lot more on that. Oh yes, that will come to. That will all come to yeah. in end times because yeah. it's a fascinating oh, subject. Oh, yeah. um, any other thoughts on that? Any, any scriptures, Marlon? I know you've got a lot of notes there. Yeah. No, I think basically we're we're covering the same ground, you know. And Roger Oakland says in one of his films as well that if a prophet's teaching does not line up with what God is saying, then we must distance ourselves from them. And you can look at Second Timothy three verses ten to seventeen, and in Joshua one eight it says, "Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth." And that means that we have to meditate on it, we have to think on it, it's to be close to us all the time, and then we'll know whether prophecies are true or false yeah. and whether they've been fulfilled or they're still to come because we'll know that word. And we won't know, some people I know, I think, know every word of this from beginning to end, but that's very unusual. Most of us will know a good portion of it, Alistair, and, and the Lord will keep us right as, as we work together and study together, not just in this, but in discipleship classes yeah. or whatever you're doing. Um, and, and he will, as we get to know that word, he will reveal to us what he's doing and reveal it to us at the right time if it's something we haven't known already. Yeah. I, like, I liked it in the Daniel Project when, Jer was it Jeremy Kitchen? Was uh, the, the guy who was reading through... Hitchens. Is it, is it Jeremy Hitchens? Is it? Kitchens. It was in the kitchen. <laughs> Um, and he he went through the prophecies and he he seemed amazed by each one he was reading out and then uh -huh. the shekel which was the, the Israeli coin, coin uh -huh. came back into currency yeah. Yeah. and he said guess what yeah. and it had a shekel and I've been he, lost he for be amazed. Yeah. 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 and it was watching him read it out and you think he's either yeah. acting very well or he's actually genuinely surprised but going through the the prophecies that were listed just in the Daniel project is to give you an overview because, mm -hmm. as you say, Marilyn, there are hundreds. I know. Um, go on and it, go on. It, it is a fascinating documentary to watch more than once because there's so much information in it. Mm. If you haven't seen it, Alice, yeah. I've seen a bit of it. Yeah, it's, it's good watching. to sit down and watch. Yeah. From, but it's like a feature film length, uh -huh. but it's very but good. It's, and it's split up, so you yes. can you know you can watch a bit and then go back to it. But I mean, I think when you get into the New Testament and you see the Lord. Yeah. prophesying like, mm. about the destruction of the temple in AD 70 mm. and so on that confirms it for you as mm. well you know this is mm. this is God himself yeah. telling us that these things will happen not a man mm. but the son of man you know um, I was going to read you a scripture mm -hmm. right? you know go back to the question yeah. um, how do you recognize prophecy fulfilled and still to come now, the example that jumps out at me is if you go into Luke 4, uh -huh. and if we start at verse 16, and the heading in this is, again, we've spoken about the headings before, 
Jesus is rejected at Nazareth. Now, start at verse 16. Now, this is talking about Jesus. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found a place where it is written. Now, the next bit is actually a quote from Isaiah 66. 61, sorry. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and to recover the sight of the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now, Jesus was actually reading mm -hmm. about himself yeah. there from the scroll of Isaiah which is pretty poor oh, for a start. But if you look where that stopped, okay? Verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And that's where he stops reading. But if you go back to Isaiah 61, which I did have replaced, but I lost it now. So is that making sense to you, Alistair? Yes, yeah. the Lord was actually standing there reading out from this scroll basically about himself. Um, now, if we look at Isaiah 61, we can read it word for word, if you like. Spirit of the, Lord, of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release the prison release from darkness the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Okay? And that's where he stopped. Mm -hmm. So that was prophecy fulfilled. Now if you continue to read on from there and the day of vengeance of our God. So from there on in it's prophecy but it's unfulfilled. Yeah. It's still yeah. to happen. Now this is actually, if you go on and read through it, we won't do it at the moment, but if you go on to read through that that is talking about the second, second coming, coming of the Lord. So it's quite a profound thing he was actually reading out there. You right. know, reading about himself up to the point. And he says in verse 21 in Luke, what you're reading today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yes. He actually tells them. Mm -hmm. But up, only fulfilled. up to that point. Yes. Uh -huh. Because yes. from there onward yes. is prophecy unfulfilled. Uh -huh. unfulfilled. So I thought that was yeah. quite a good example for the question. It's showing you the prophecy that's been fulfilled, read out by the Lord. I mean, what better could you get mm -hmm. about himself? And then he knows to stop there because the rest yeah. is for future. And that's it. Most of the prophet, well, the prophecies that are not fulfilled are about his second coming yeah. and what develops before that yeah. and after that. Yeah. So. So I thought that was a good one yeah, to give an example of. Does yeah. that make sense to you, yeah. Alistair? Mm. I think so. Some of it does anyway. Some, some of it anyway. Yeah. I'll give you an idea that when when you come to read these things... Um, I'll have a better understanding when I'm reading through it. Yeah, but I haven't got to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, Heather? Are you, you okay with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. What chapter was that in Luke again? Four. Four. Take my brain Start. <laughs> Start with verse 16. Yeah. But, but the... the the quote is 18 and 19. Yeah. And then it goes on. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant. So as he's yeah. only read to there, right, that'll do yeah. because and the rest of it's rest for the future. Of the future. future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to me, that's a good example of yeah. fulfilled and still to come. Still to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that'll make a wee bit of sense to you anyway. And you see with Simeon and Anna in Luke, how they waited and waited, you know, Anna was an old yeah. woman, prophetess. Simeon was an old yeah. man, she was a prophetess, he yeah. was a prophet. And they had waited all their lives because the Lord had promised them they would see the Messiah. Yeah. And when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple to be circumcised and all of that, they were able to say, you know, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, 
a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And that's really telling, that light for revelation to the Gentiles, because after the Lord um, was crucified and ascended and the uh, disciples received the Holy Spirit, then they went out yeah. to all the nations, the Jews first and then all the yeah. nations. So you see that there as well, yeah. you know. So again, as you've said there, Marlon, that was prophesied to them that they would see this happening. Yeah. And they were pretty old. They were nearly at the end of their lives. Mm. They must have been thinking, well, what's going on here? And then they did actually see it. So again, the Lord was faithful. And again, it was prophecy that was fulfilled. Mm. In fact, Anna was 84. She was. Um, She'd been with her husband for a long time. Well, her husband only lived seven years after her oh, marriage and then right. she was a widow until she was 84. 84. And she never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying and waiting for so that Lord day when she would her. see, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Quite a day, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Must have been quite a day. Wonderful. And as we've spoken about, you know, there's so many other examples we could give. Um, but I think what we've covered... Gives you an idea, you know, an answer to the question. So, if we're all okay with that, yes. we'll, we'll leave it at that. And you're right, people can do so much more studying and investigating yeah. themselves in all of these books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thoroughly recommend reading through uh -huh. them. So. And so much help on the Lamplight and the, the Daniel Project and, and the films on GV 24-7. Mm. You know, there's so much to help people Very who may feel so. overwhelmed as we have, um, <laughs> by all the information and, you know, everything that we're studying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm afraid we're out of time again, so mm. thank you all for your input. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank so you. much. It's been really good. This is GV247.TV bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries, and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.tv, our free service web TV channel. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years. And if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch.